Hello, wonderful viewers. Welcome back again to Anointed Lady TV. I greet all of you according to Una time. Yes, my correct viewers. This video will be say me and you one watch. So now concerning waiting they happen for a do state presently. Now, Bini artifact will be say uh, London be British people the thief ever since to come return now. I wish I the continue to talk. I wish say maybe with the Edo we come together. This thing will for not get to this extent. To the extent, like Mohammed, don't come the claim as Nigeria property. Like seriously, waiting then tea for our own Oba Palace. Now, like Mohammed, come talk say na Nigeria property. Make I drop the video. Make me and you watch them. Drop your opinion for the comment section. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. Bye for now. Good morning, gentlemen. And I thank you once again for honoring our invitation. We've organized this press conference to update Nigerians on the efforts being made by the federal government to repatriate looted and smuggled Nigerian artifacts from all over the world. We also believe that you, as critical stakeholders, must be carried along in these efforts. Recall, gentlemen, that on the, the 28th of November, 2019, I announced at a press conference here in Lagos the launching of the campaign for the return and restitution of Nigeria's looted or smuggled artifacts from around the world. I say that with the launch, we are putting on notice all those who are holding on to Nigeria's cultural property anywhere in the world that we are coming for them, using all legal and diplomatic instruments available to us. Less than two years later, I can report back to Nigerians that our efforts at repatriating Nigeria's looted artifacts are achieving positive results. The work ahead remains tough and daunting, but we will not relent until we have repatriated all our stolen and smuggled artifacts. These artifacts are so cherished all over the world, and we realize that if they are returned to Nigeria and properly exhibited, within and outside the country, under our control, they stand to increase the influx of tourists to our nation and also earn us good money. Of course, these timeless and priceless pieces of work are important, are an important part of our past, of our history, of our heritage and resources, and allowing them to sit in the museums of other nations rob us of our history. Gentlemen, even though not everyone in possession of these artifacts is willing to return them, we remain undeterred as we have deployed all legal and diplomatic means and we have been recording successes in our quest for repatriation. Here are some of the successes we have recorded since that press conference of 2019. In October 2020, the Netherlands returned a highly valued 600-year-old Eiffel terracotta to us. In March 2021, the University of Aberdeen in Scotland agreed to return a Benin bronze from its collections. We shall take possession of this in October this year. In April, 2021, we received a bronze piece from, Mex from Mexico. The University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom has also agreed to return a disputed Benin artifact. We will soon com commence the procedure for the repatriation of this highly valued piece. We have also secured a date in October 2021 for the repatriation of 
antiquities from the Metropolitan Museum in New York. These antiquities consist of two important Bini bronzes and an exquisite Ife bronze head. We are currently before the Intergovernmental Committee for promoting the return of cultural property to its countries of origin or in substitution in case of illicit appropriation in Paris, where we have instituted a claim against a Belgian who wanted to auction an Ife bronze head valued at $5 million. This, life, this Ife bronze antiquity had been seized by the London Metropolitan Police pending the decision of who the true owner is. Of course, we all know that the true owner is Nigeria. The most remarkable progress in our quest to perpetrate our looted artifacts has been recorded in Germany, which is currently working with us for the repatriation of a whopping 1,130 Benin bronzes to Nigeria. As you are all aware, we recently returned from Germany, where I led a high-level Nigerian delegation to iron out the modalities for the repatriation. During this trip, our delegation met with Professor Monica Grontas, who is the German Minister of State for Culture, who has responsibility for antiquities. We also met with the German Foreign Minister, Mr. Eiko Maas. We met with the Secretary of State in the German President's Office, Mr. Steven Stenlein, and we met with Hermann Pazinga, who is the President of the Prussian Cultural Heritage Foundation which is the center of the German culture establishment and its team. We also met with the directors of at least 20 major museums in Germany. The negotiations were tough, but very fruitful. We've agreed that there is no going back on the issue of, return, of returning the Bini bronzes at that uh, meeting. At the meetings in Germany, our delegation insisted, and it was resolved, that the issue of provenance research on the Benin bronze cannot and must not delay their return, since the origin of Benin objects is not a subject of dispute, as such objects are only associated with the Benin kingdom. On the German authorities' proposal to return a substantial part of the Benin bronzes, I'm happy to say that we've, we've agreed that the issue of substantia should not be the case. The entire 1,130 artifacts should be returned to Nigeria, and this should be done without any condition precedent. Concerning recording the artifacts in 3D formats, for posterity and, acad and academic sake under the digital, the, the, uh, digital BINI project of which we are a part, we have told the Germans that this work of digitalizing the BINI bronze must not delay the return of artifacts and that issues related to copyright, ownership, and other rights over the digitalized, digitalized objects will be discussed later. We also agreed to have a definite timeline for the repatriation of the artifacts because Nigeria is tired of an indefinite timeline. Thereafter, it was resolved that the agreement on the repatriation should be signed latest by December this year and that the repatriation should be concluded by August 2022. We made our German counterparts realize that Nigeria is averse to attaching preconditions to repatriating the Benin bronzes. We made it clear that these are our properties, that these are our properties. 
and it was not the proper to give us conditions for releasing them. We therefore agreed that the release will be unconditional, neither will it be staggered. It must be noted, however, that the meetings in Germany were not only about repatriating these objects. We have decided that the repatriation of the artifacts should not be the end of an era, but rather the beginning of a new vista of stronger relations and collaboration pivoted by cultural diplomacy between Nigeria and Germany. In this regard, there are other benefits accruing to Nigeria from the ongoing talks. There will be archaeological training for Nigerians, for instance. The Nigerian side and the German side agreed also to Nigeria's proposal to use the repatriated artifacts mm -hmm. and other works of art to inspire Nigeria's creative industry towards realizing its high potential for sorry, towards realizing its high potential. For this and other purposes, it was agreed that the Germans would facilitate the establishment of museum academies in Nigeria. Gentlemen, the federal government is aware of the widely reported controversy on who will take possession of the Benin bronzes when they are returned from Germany. Let me state clearly here that in line with international best practices and the operative conventions and laws, the return of the artifacts is being negotiated bilaterally between the national governments of Nigeria and Germany. Nigeria is the entity recognized by international law as the authority in control of antiquities originating from Nigeria. The relevant international conventions treat heritage properties as properties belonging to the nation and not to individuals or subnational groups. For example, the 1970 UNESCO Convention in its Article 1 defines cultural property as properties specifically designated by the nation. This allows individual nations to determine what it regards as its cultural property. Nevertheless, the Nigerian state, through the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture and the National Commission for Museums and Monuments, has been working, has in working assiduously over the past years to repatriate our looted artifacts carried along our important traditional institutions and state governments. What we are saying, in essence, is that the federal government will take possession of these antiquities because it is, it is its duty to do so, in line with the extant laws. But we have always exercised this right in cognizance of that culture that produced the artworks. That is why the Ministry of Information and Culture and the National Commission for Museums and Monuments have always involved both the Edo State Government and the Royal Beni Palace in discussions and negotiations that have now res resulted in the impending return of these antiquities. Please note that we are not just involved in the repatriation of Beni artifacts, we are also working on repatriating Ife bronzes and terracotta, not terracotta or terracotta, the arts of the Benue River Valley, the Igbo Uku, the arts of Bida, the arts of Igala, Jukum, etc. Recall, gentlemen, our efforts over the Igbo statues that were auctioned at Christie's in year 2020 and the fact that we took the British and Belgian authorities to ICPRCP in 2019 over an IFE object. Finally, I want to most sincerely commend the government of Germany for taking the lead in the global efforts to repatriate all artifacts that were looted from Nigeria and indeed from the African continent. As I said during the meeting in Berlin, 
We see Germany as a leader in the efforts to take practical steps to repatriate our stolen artifacts, and we hope Germany will sustain that lead. I also want to thank Governor, Governor Obaseki of Edo State, who was with us all through the tough negotiation in Benin, and His Royal Majesty the Oba of Benin, who sent the Benin Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Ezele Kaya Ewari, to be a part of the Nigerian delegation to Berlin. We thank all Nigerians, especially the media, for their support for our efforts to repatriate all our looted artifacts. Gentlemen, once again, I thank you for listening. I will now take a few questions. I think the first question is, um, how, 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 how do we warehouse it? And uh, I would say this. One, we agreed in Germany that the returning of these artifacts should not be should not be based on any condition, whether there's a museum or no museum. Now, I will say this for many reasons. I don't think if you steal my car, and my car is, and the police recover my car from you, you can't tell me that I must build a garage before you return my car. Where do you steal it from? But on a more, more serious note, and I made this clear in Germany, that some of these artifacts are more than 300, 400 years old, even before they were stolen. How, would they, how are they preserved? We had the local technology to preserve. But this is without, you know, prejudice to the fact that the government is working in partnership with many organizations to provide museum infrastructure in the country. And part of the agreement we you know, arrived at in Germany is that this is not just about return of artifacts. It's about even you know, setting up museum academies. It's about investing in infrastructure to you know, preserve artifacts. But what we are saying is that this, none of these should be condition precedent to the turn of the artifacts. When the artifacts are returned, we would definitely know how to preserve them, we know how to exhibit them. And like we said earlier, it's not, it's even part of our own program that when these artifacts are returned, we would probably have them exhibited even outside Nigeria. We even them, you know, it's what is called, you know, traveling, uh, traveling exhibition. Then we also can decide as I want appropriate, where to loan it, and at what terms and condition. But that none of this will be condition president of the returning of the artifacts. The second question is about how, whether we are sure that what they are going to return is original or not. What we do have a lot of confidence in our German, uh, you know, counterparts, and we believe they do the needful. But I think uh, the DG NCMM would give you more technical explanation as to that. Um, the last question is about what is the interest of the guy, of the gentleman, the Belgian, who is holding on to our artifacts? It's money. He wants $5 million for it. Because when it was, he went to, he went to value it, you know, at an auction um, house in London. And when he got the price, he was, he was so excited, not knowing that the, uh, metropolitan police would intervene because we had already notified the Interpol and every other organization that this piece was stolen from just museum. So when he got the uh, auction, he got the value and it was inter it accepted, he now offered, he now pleaded that he bought in uh, good faith and we should, rec we should compensate him. But he's asking for about $5 million, which not only we don't have, but this is our, I mean, I, I, we cannot be rebuying in our own property from somebody who bought from a thief. I, I think I will allow Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Tijani 
to please her, you know, if there are any technical issues that have not covered to please her, you know, go to the technicians. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, regarding the Belgian who uh, actually has possession of uh, uh, artifacts, which he is now with the Metropolitan Museum in the uh, UK. Um, I think, uh, you know, as an art uh, dealer, he, he, he wants to, you know, he wants to get money for it, basically, that's what it is. And uh, one, uh, you know, funny thing is that he wants us to compensate him for these artifacts. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, he will go to court to claim ownership. And how can somebody steal something from you and then you compensate for this person? So we are setting precedents, which means any other artifacts that are stolen, then the person can claim, you know, to be paid, you know, compensation. So under the 1970 UNESCO Convention, that any illicit trans, uh, trafficking of uh, artifacts, uh, you know, we have to claim. We have to lay our ownership, and that is why this one is going to the UNESCO, uh, you know, committee. Uh, uh, that is the state now. So we are not ready to pay any compensation for that. Uh, that is uh, just a little bit on that. And then the second aspect, uh, the question which relates to the, you know, how do we authenticate, you know, our artifacts? I mean, uh, we are the NCMM, the National Commission for Museums and Monuments. Uh, we're a professional body, so we have our curators, our documentation officers, our exhibition officers, our archaeologists, our ethnographers, all these technical teams are there to identify any artifacts. That is one. We know the history. We know, we know by mere looking at the artifacts, the various inscriptions on the artifacts, you know, the, the features and everything will uh, enable us to know. You may not know. You will see the features, but you will not understand. So we'll be able to differentiate between uh, a, a replica of the artifacts from the original. So we have that uh, technicality. And uh, in the first place, uh, I want us to understand that, you know, we know these artifacts are, you know, uh, out of our possession for decades. And therefore, that doesn't mean that we don't have the technical know-how. You know, we have been in, in contact with them. And most of these artifacts, we have similar, you know, uh, uh, objects here uh, in, our object, in our museums. So by the time we get these objects to be repatriated, our technical team will be in Germany to verify. You know, that we don't want to waste time and resources, you know, bringing artifacts and we find that they are not originals. So we want to do this verification at the point before they are actually repatriated. So we have agreed that with the, our German colleagues and uh, we are going to do that and our technical experts will be there to verify these artifacts before they are being repatriated.